curaste una pesquera, una pesquera. As you can see, there is some little puddle, actually dos, uh, two, and that is from the sprinkler. So that is where the water cannot infiltrate because the soil there is very compacted. I drove the machine over this multiple times. And the soil in the areas where we have planted something is absorbing that moisture. And this is now running for an hour. I am about to turn it off and we will also seed there in the area that is void of plants. So this is how this is progressing. This time around these sunflowers look quite different than they looked the last time. Those self-seeded. So they are from the same variety. And what I find very interesting is how many flowers the same plant has. Look at the one here in the foreground. And there's still new flowers coming up. So that is pretty impressive. I always was under the impression that the sunflower has only one. But these prove me wrong. Interesting is also how the Polovnia trees made very, very big leaves. That is their second year, so they are using the root system from the year before. That one over here has a very, very big leaf there hanging in the foreground, the one that is now moving in the wind. So the technical cut, so to say, has happened, and now the tree re-sprouts and uses the root system from the year before. Another interesting thing is, here we have the Bermuda grass and in between are okra plants. The okra plants are those that you see here in the center of the image. And I'm very curious to see how that goes. What I wish for is that the okra stays on top and the Bermuda grass provides ground cover and therefore protects the soil against evaporation. That would be very lovely. Instead of maintaining the soil bare, so market st uh, garden style, I would love to cultivate something while maintaining a grassy ground cover. I'm not sure if that is possible, but this is now a good opportunity to see this working. I'm taking you a little bit around this patch here to see. Now that Bermuda grass here. It's pretty tall, but that's probably the maximum it can can be. I wish we had this all over the place as forage. And it could be if um, we care for it well enough. Ah, by the way, you see some cut marks there. I made them when I was cutting things a little bit so that they stay low. But I did not cut here on the outside, only on the inside. Oh, and I need to go over there and show you the Tagasaste plant. So here it is. I can't really say that this is thriving, but it's alive. And it gets water, the same as everybody else. But I'm pretty unsure about this plant here. It's not what I expected. So, but then, we are not trying 
to do cattle ranching and feed the cattle with Tagasaste during the summer. We built a forest now, so the change of direction. So this is interesting, but this is not um, what I'm putting all my hopes on. But, of course, um, we need to continue observing this and see how it goes. When there are other plants that uh, might take over, I will remove them and uh, keep the yeah, supposed to being a Tagasaster in the game as much as I can, but um, I expected a shrub. And that's not really shrub-like what I see there. I probably should do some more research about how a Tagasaster is supposed to look like in the early stages. And also a bit of a weather report. So the morning was cloudless, bright sun, good solar power and in the afternoon, so it started around 2 o'clock, the clouds came back and this is how it looks now. Um, it looked for a moment like it were to rain, but it did not. That patch here behind our temporary house is now seeing also some well-established Palovnia trees, those were the darker leaves, and the species for biomass, the corn, the sunflower and the sun hemp, they are also growing. So all that moisture there in the soil is helping, but now that we are not getting rain, irrigation has started again. And the same goes for this area here, which looks a little bit weird. But this will become a lot nicer once Sunhip and Friends have grown. And we did have some very strong wind and therefore <laughs> some things <laughs> started to fly and I need to collect them. So let me do this quickly before I go over there to see what the sheep are up to. They are sleeping under the tree there. Oh, they are ruminating. So they are processing their food. They are ruminants the same way as cows, just little ones. I wanted to go to the sheep first, but now that I'm here on this side, because of the things that I had to recover, I can show you that. So here we have a little forest of um, the, let's call them support species. And if I climb up here on that wall I can also show you that in there there is a Palovnia tree and there is another one and over there there are more I cut around them away the other plants so that um, the Palovnia gets enough sunlight and the leaves of these trees Quite interesting what Knut is doing there, but that's okay. <laughs> that's what a dog does. So, you can see the leaves of the Palovnia are dark. And that means now the tree will start growing. So before it had to make a root system, but now it um, will start to grow upwards. And the sunshine is important for that. So I did that for all of the trees here. So there are these little holes and I actually have to come here every day and check and when necessary cut a little bit more because the growth is now very very fast. It's quite impressive. I wanted to check on the cheap but I will take a different route now and also show you Saka Hawaii and she is hearing my voice. Um, to show you how she looks like. She's getting definitely better. So all the treatment with the teeth and also the injections we are giving her is um, having a positive effect. And a quick look at these. For example, see that one? 
that is the one that received the technical cut involuntarily and it is growing extremely fast you can see that it's kind of catching up to the one to the right so they are all in their second year and you see how quickly this one grows our makeshift solar array is holding out it is um, a little bit weak <laughs> things are falling apart but it continues to work and I hope that by the end of this year all these panels are now at a better location either on a roof or on some sort of a structure there but I think they will be on that roof of the barn and some of them or probably these and the other ones will be new ones um, over there where the yurt currently is the yurt will be removed once it dried out again and instead of the yurt in the same location um, we want to build and I talked to Angel we are going to do this ourselves um, in the fashion of a US style pole barn we will build um, a little um, yeah a little thing let's call it a shed for the batteries and the solar system and on top we will put these panels they help um, with protection against the sun because it will be cooler underneath those panels so that the roof will be in the shade of those panels and at the same time they make electricity because inside we will have to have air conditioning to keep the batteries and the whole system cool and we will do this over there and the barn that I mentioned will be over there of course we start this once our financial situation has improved and we can actually afford to buy the material and all that but we figured that amongst the three of us we can do this because Angel and I have some experience after all we built our temporary house in US style stick framing so we should be able to pull off a pole barn and we will start with a small structure so five by six meters that's what I envision and the barn over there will be a lot larger I'm not sure what the span is going to be the thing is roof trusses I figured um, by research that we can order them here in Spain they are engineered roof trusses but maybe we can get away with roof rafters depending on the design I am researching that and trying to make up my mind so probably we go narrower and long or something like that somehow we get this done so here is Mrs. Sakahawea she is not in great shape but she's definitely better and as you can see she's also curious can't see but can hear me and you can see that all around there is a lot of manure and spent straw so she is eating and processing this and every day she gets about two kilo of um, supplemental feed to give her the proteins and all the other things that she needs because the straw is not very nutritious and almost has nothing but it's important so that her stomach is working and she gets the injections and we report frequently back to the vet how her situation is evolving and I think she will be a fat lady again in a little while and you can see that she is doing something with all this material this here is the drier side while over there it's always a little bit wet and somehow she pushes all the manure to this side here so she is a very smart girl so therefore we do what we can to help her with this problem and it's a bacterial infection caused by a parasite so therefore in combination with the teeth problem that prevented her from chewing 
and therefore she could not take advantage of the nutrients in the food. She did receive plenty, but uh, as I learned, when a horse just swallows it, it goes in and out and not much is left for the body. So that was the reason why she got so skinny. And now that she can chew, things are improving. Of course it goes not that fast, but she is definitely getting better. And she's a fighter. She definitely does not want to disappear from this mud ball anytime soon. So that's very good. That's what also her daddy, so to say, Carlos, who bred her and raised her, also said. He said, this one survives in the jungle. So I can see it. So I'm looking forward to have her around for a long time. Unfortunately, she lost her eyesight, but she knows a lot. And when I was able to ride her, I could open gates without um, dismounting and all these things. And she knows all the cues, a very, very well-trained horse. But being blind, there is not much one can do. What I might also mention is, today is Monday, and Monday usually is the day when Angel, in nearby Pozo Blanco, the city, so to say, um, runs a lot of errands. One of the items that he brought today is a pressure reduction valve, so that we can lower a little bit the pressure in our water lines, because it's a little bit too much what the pump down at the outflow of the water reservoir provides. So we have pipes bursting and uh, we don't want that. So we are going to install this tomorrow. And we ran out of time today because of all the errands and it takes a long time to go from one place to another and be attended and all this. So what we wanted to do is uh, we wanted to use our power arrow here in this area. Um, the screws that he brought work. So we can definitely now put this machine to work. It's a 40-year-old machine. I used this when I was a child. <laughs> I think around the age of, um, I don't know, 16, 17, something like that. Um, and the idea is, here around this chicken coop, we want to loosen up the soil and seed sun hemp and friends. And then also protect it from the sheep while it grows. And when it has grown a little bit, so let's say a month or two months later, doesn't have to go to maturity, we will then get a few chicken and one goose and try this here in this location. So this is then the beginning of that poultry project. And more of that we will then do over there in this area, step by step, of course because that is one of the areas where we want to work after we are done with the most important things in the compound. So, first the compound, then the surrounding area. And that is part of the surrounding area. And we start by seeding things here. And that also will give us important data points, because when the chicken and the goose uh, in the mix of um, sun, hemp and friends, we can see how they forage on that. And this is then precisely what is going to happen in a few years, I have to say. Um, over there, and all the way up the slope, what we call our zone C. And by the way, you can see the bovines there. They have this whole area to themselves at the moment, because we removed all the fencing, so that they can go underneath the wires and forage wherever they like, because the rain has brought a lot of new forage. So over there, when we then have a lot of Palovnia trees and Sunham and Friends and all this, then underneath that, uh, that new canopy that will form, um, we want to have then the poultry. But this is a multi-year project, and as I keep mentioning, I will publish more as the plan matures, and becomes more more serious. But we are doing experiments to figure out components of this. And here 
we will very soon um, do more of that. So expect to see Polovnia trees here in this place and also Sunhemp in France. So the sheep rest here in this area and then they venture out into the center and also there where the Polovnia is. But they're still afraid every time they hear a dog barking, <laughs> they huddle and try to figure out will the dog come here or not. But when they are hungry, they go in that direction because that is where the food is. In their hiding place here in the back, they almost ate everything. So hunger makes you accept the risk. And I just opened this here. And by the way, you see here, this leaking, that is because of the high pressure. These couplings are not made for that kind of pressure. But that's what we have at the moment. There is a way to um, remove the couplings and kind of weld the plastic together, but you can't do this when you want to have a tea. So that is why for the compound we want to try a pressure reduction valve so that the pressure gets lowered the moment um, we go into the compound. But here, that's a different thing. But maybe we also will install some of these. So we need to figure these things out. That is also part of the prep work for the Polovnia plantation work, or building a forest, not only Polovnia. So we are now more focusing on these things instead of being distracted by cattle ranching. And I turned on the drip irrigation for these trees because this area here is a bit dry and as you can see there's not that much of vegetation because it's also in the shade, I mentioned this before, of um, the trees around. So I want to give them a boost so that they have it a little bit easier. You can also see the leaf color. It's not that dark green, it's more the lightish green. And that now to me means these trees are not in perfect condition and I need some help when I try to provide them that. Because over here, these ones are in a lot better shape. But then the soil is a lot better because it has a lot more organic compound because we let it grow, then I cut it with a scythe a few times and then it grew again. We had watermelons there, so there was already quite some activity. And the other thing that I wanted to show you is that definitely it becomes lighter and lighter, so the sheep are foraging on this here. And they have not gone for any of the Palovnia trees as far as I can tell. So. They are foraging around, so they cut all the upper part of these trees there, trees, <laughs> of these plants there. I have no idea what they are, but apparently the sheep do like them because you see the bite marks basically on every one, except the three tall ones here. And again, nothing has happened with the dry grass. Neither have they tried to eat any of the Polovnia leaves. These sheep know that Polovnia is edible to them because we saw them nibbling on some before. Um, that was those trees over there. So this is not completely foreign to them, but apparently they prefer the other plants, which is good. And my intention is to keep them here for a while until all this has been reduced significantly and all the while they are in here I also have water in here and we have a water already when the puddles have dried out or they drink everything um, when they are done here then we will let them out and all the grasses in the surrounding area all of that there are then available because the horses are also in a different place So this is looking pretty good. 
I am happy with how this system works. There have not been a lot amongst those trees, but earlier I saw them right there in the shade of those trees. And we have a little fountain there that happens when the cap of the mini sprinkler is missing. But I don't mind at the moment. We are not wasting any water because it helps that soil here and it's kind of free. comes from the outflow of the water reservoir. And if we don't overdo it, that well will not fall dry. So far it never did, even it was very, very dry all around. So here are these four ladies. And now that it seems clear that the temperatures will rise and stay high, it is now definitely also dry uh, time to remove the wool. Juan is currently away for a week. He has sheep of his own and he has to take care of some of these things there. And when he comes back, then Angel and Juan can do this together. They have done this before. We have three other sheep, seven in total. They have some issues. Um, they have the wool removed and are currently in a building, in a shed. And uh, they are being attended there. And when they are ready to come out and the temperatures are good for that, they will then rejoin these four. A couple of clips before, I mentioned and showed you this one here. Back then, it looked like a small ball. Now, it has grown. And it's definitely now more looking like you would expect from a mushroom. So this saucer type of shape. Now apparently this works, it's not too dry, so that it can exist. Because as far as I know, mushrooms are mostly water. And it does appear that this time we are getting some cherries. Unless the birds get to them first. But so far, they are developing. Well, I think they are cherries. <laughs> we'll see later. There might be also some plums in here. This is an interesting detail. You can see that the skinch tree somehow lost these leaves here on one side. I don't know due to what. The rest of the tree looks perfectly normal. But a similar thing also happened to the neighbor. It rained quite a lot. Who knows what the reason for that is. All living things can get sick. I don't know. So I need to keep an eye on this. And I am not an expert on these things. I learn by observing and then looking things up and asking questions. So this is interesting to see. There are foods and uh, we made a few things out of the kinch last year. And those things were delicious. As far as quinch can be delicious, it depends. It's uh, a taste that apparently not everybody likes. But these fruits were definitely perfectly fine. 